Hello, how are you doing? It's a lovely sunny day here in London and I have a big stack of new books so I thought it'd be good to make a book haul video because I think a lot of these titles sound really cool and I've not heard them discussed other places or at least most of them I, I haven't and that's partly because they are mostly newly published in February here in the UK. Uh, some of these books publishers kindly send me and others I went out and bought myself because I think they sound really good. Uh, first off there's a novel which uh, was actually published in December and I wish I had known about it uh, then because I would have added it to my winter reading list but we are still in winter. I, I was just chatting with my parents and apparently it's been very snowy and incredibly cold in uh, my native state of Maine and uh, so uh, very different from here in London where it's still chilly but very sunny. Anyway this is a novel set uh, during the winter time in Reykjavik in Iceland. Uh, Animal Life by Odur Eva Olofsdottir and the protagonist is a, a woman who uh, comes descended from a family of undertakers but also midwives and uh, she is a midwife herself uh, but uh, a big storm descends upon Reykjavik and she spends a lot of time inside uh, going over letters um, from family members from her in the past and she discovers things about her family life but is also considering these issues to do with life um, because her family has been so involved very much with the beginning of life but also the end of life um, so looking at all of these things and it just has a really lovely cover um, so I think this will be a great winter read. Next is a book which takes my favorite form of fiction I think which is interconnected short stories. It's If I Survive You by Jonathan S. Goffrey and this book uh, it begins with a man who's of Jamaican descent but was born in America uh, following his story and his uh, dilemmas um, regarding his identity and race and how that is presented um, but gives a really new take on all of these issues and then looks at issues to do with his family life and their their movement to um, America but also a lot of contemporary events including the financial crisis and hurricanes and um, so looking at all of these things. I think it was first published in America in the autumn but it's only just come out here in the UK in this lovely new edition and it's um, come with endorsements from uh, authors like Diana Evans and Rahman Alam, uh, Percival Everett and Anne Patchett. Um, also I saw Joyce Carol Oates um, just tweeted about it recently and how much she appreciated it especially as a book of interconnected short stories so I'm so excited to read this. Then there is a book of actual uh, short stories called Call and Response by Gothitone Moen and uh, this is an author um, from Botswana. I don't think I've read any fiction from Botswana before and uh, these are all stories uh, with female protagonists uh, so uh, one is a story about a, a woman um, whose husband died a year ago and she's not changed her clothes since another is a, um, a young woman who's um, carrying on an illicit affair that her family doesn't know about so it's looking at all um, issues to do with uh, female experience in Botswana and I think sounds absolutely fascinating has a really beautiful vibrant cover. A debut novel called Brutes by Diz Tate. Uh, this is set in Florida and follows a group of adolescent girls that have a very tight-knit social group in uh, this city in Florida that's mainly known for its amusement parks but it looks at another side of that city and state and uh, and how and the incredible close bond between these girls which seems unbreakable but then when uh, it does break um, the the tragedy and upset of that um, especially when one of their group uh, with the leader of the group kind of goes missing so following that dramatic story and it comes with um, an endorsement on the back from uh, Mariana Enriquez um, who says the mystery and the danger of being a girl of feeling crazy and vulnerable and wild wanting to run away and be someone 
anyone is captured here across a landscape of nail polish and fire and sex, a sinister lake and the pink sky of Florida. Brutes is a beautiful and deeply strange novel full of dread and longing. I loved it. Next is a reprint of a really interesting sounding novel that was first published in 1930, The Shutter of Snow by Emily Holmes Coleman. Um, this comes with a new introduction by uh, Claire Louise uh, Bennett, um, who's a really interesting, uh, quite like experimental writer. And it explores the experience of a woman um, that is experiencing mental difficulties after after giving birth and um, and her and it it's explores the ambivalence of her state of mind and um, so you're kind of wondering what is real and what is not real what is imagined in her existence um, but also the the plight of women in this position um, which uh, wasn't often talked about um, back in 1930. Um, so it sounds like quite a groundbreaking novel and um, this also comes with endorsements from a number of really interesting writers that I really adore um, like Lucy Elman um, who says in this extraordinary novel Coleman rebelliously shows how women might write if we were free and how murderous we'd be and uh, also Yi Yun Lee and Sinead Gleason um, so yeah uh, sounds absolutely fascinating. Next is a novel that that has a really beautiful and striking cover and that I'm currently reading now, uh, which is The World and All That It Holds by Alexander Hamon. Uh, this begins in Sarajevo um, back in the early um, 20th century, um, just before the beginning of the First World War, um, begins with the very dramatic event of Franz Ferdinand being assassinated and um, then following events afterwards, from um, mainly from the point of view of a a man um, who's uh, who's gay and um, and is then uh, conscripted into the army uh, along with many other citizens at that time, and uh, his relationship with another man in the army. So, I was looking at this historical period from a really interesting and different point of view. I I love the sensuality and poetic quality of the, the narrative um, so far. And it's so intriguingly um, told, um, this, this romance during the time of war as um, they are taken across Europe and um, through these very dramatic events. I also have another historical novel that gives a queer slant on the past, which is The Disenchantment by Celia Bell. Um, this takes place in France during in the court of Louis the Fourteenth, otherwise known as the, the Sun King. Um, so this is back in the um, 1600s, I, I believe, and uh, follows yeah a queer love story and the this tale of intrigue, um, which takes place place across Paris and Versailles, Versailles and, uh, and uh, uh, fortune telling and um, rumors of witchcraft and uh, so yeah a lot of intriguing things going on in this and, and I love that there are so many novels coming out that give this kind of queer slant on the past because we know there must have been so many queer love stories in history um, but which weren't recorded and which haven't been passed down so that novelists can uh, sort of bring these back into the present by like reimagining how it might have been I think is absolutely fascinating. Memorial 29th June uh, by Tina Hoag uh, who is a Danish author and uh, this is a novel about a woman who is invited to attend the memorial of a university friend of hers who had died 10 years ago um, but amidst this um, she discovers new information surrounding uh, her friend's death um, so looks into that and um, in doing so looks into how like grief is also part of the creative process. Another debut novel is uh, History Keeps Me Awake at Night by Christy Edwall. Uh, a really great title for a novel and this follows the perspective of a woman um, who seems settled in her life in London but then she learns of a group of uh, students that disappeared in Mexico and becomes quite obsessed with this case and goes to investigate it. So it's set between London and Mexico and how in the process of trying to find out 
what happened to these students who are lost, she kind of loses herself. I have a couple of new nonfiction books that I think sound really interesting. Uh, so first is Jan Bloomsbury, A New Queer History by Nino Strachey. And uh, so I've always been interested in uh, the Bloomsbury Group and the, the stories um, surrounding these various writers and artists um, who are quite influential and like radical in their thinking and the way that they lived. And so um, this is looking at how this um, group of artists and writers, um, how they were very like forward thinking in their practice, but how that they incorporated that into their work. So um, is looking at them, you know, specifically through this like queer lens of, of history. And Nino Strachey, the, the author, is actually um, a descendant of one of the Bloomsbury group, um, Lytton Strachey. And um, so, yeah, has a very personal like perspective on it and insights into it. Red Memory by Tanya Brannigan. Uh, this is a history of of the Cultural Revolution in China, an incredibly tumultuous and deadly period um, during Mao's rule, and uh, looking at the, the stories and accounts of individuals who have been silent about what occurred during this period um, for decades, um, but who are finally talking about it, and she's looking into um, these different accounts. And I'm especially interested in reading this because a couple of months ago I read a novel called Cocoon, um, which is all about a couple of characters who are the descendants of uh, people that survived the Cultural Revolution and how there is this big silence around that period of, of time and um, so they're living with all of this trauma that they don't really understand and um, so that these things are being finally being uncovered and dealt with um, seems like a really necessary um, thing to occur. Nothing Can Hurt You Now by Simone Campos. Uh, this is a thriller from Brazil um, about a young woman um, who's always lived in the shadow of her much more glamorous sister but one day her sister goes missing and so she tries to track her down and in the process of trying to uncover what actually actually happened to her also discovers a lot of um, secret details about her sister's life. Um, so this author seems uh, well equipped to write a thriller because um, she is also a translator who's translated um, things uh, like uh, the view of the train girl on the train from the window. <laughs> what is the title of that novel? No, The Girl on the Train by Paula Hawkins. <laughs> I don't know why I can't remember that, that title name. I think there was like an SNL sketch which like played upon that, that title or something which is making me confuse it. Um, but she also translated Margaret Atwood's novel um, The Testaments. Um, so yeah, I, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm interested to see how this thrill, 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 thriller <laughs> plays out. <laughs> then I have another thrilling uh, historical novel called, also involving sisters, uh, called Clara and Olivia uh, by Lucy Ash. And uh, these are twin sisters in 1930s in Sadler's Wells. Um, they are both dancers and ballerinas. Uh, it is about the competition between them, but also the strong bond between them, but also how they seem to be preyed upon in a target um, for a, another sinister other person, um, so following that thrilling story. Finally, I have another genre book um, in the mystery mode, uh, which is called The Murder Game by Tom Hindle, um, which is who is fast becoming one of the most prominent new mystery writers of our time. Uh, this takes place in a seaside town in a grand manner, and a number of guests that are invited to a New Year's Eve party in which they're invited to play a murder mystery game. But yet, yeah, you can guess it, one of them is found dead, and so it's the question of who kills them and how they did it and the whole mystery surrounding it. And finally, I wanted to mention uh, one of my favorite novels from last year has just came out in paperback form and the publisher kindly sent me a copy of it, uh, The Colony by Audrey McGee. Uh, the story of a small island off the coast of Ireland uh, where the native Irish language is still spoken and uh, two strangers that arrive on this island and the dramatic events that unfold over um, that time or the, the various conflicts that they come in between each other and the uh, native people on the, the island. Um, it's such a powerful, inventive 
novel that's really stuck with me and uh, yeah so I'm just so glad that more people will be reading it now that it's finally out in paperback. So those are all of the, the books I want to discuss today. I'd love to know if you've read any of these, if you have any thoughts about them, or if you're interested in reading any of them now, or if you've uh, got any new books recently that you're really excited to get to. Please let me know about that in the comments below. I hope you're having a wonderful day and reading good things, and I'll speak to you again soon. Bye-bye.